Praise the Lord. Let's open up our Bibles to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. First John chapter 1, verse 5. As you're flipping your Bibles uh, over to this passage, Grace Elizabeth and I were driving to church today, and Elizabeth had very proudly told her mother, God bless you, after she, while she was about to walk out of the door. Then she got into the, into the car, and she said, Dad, what does God bless you mean? And, you know, I, I, I told Grace and Elizabeth that God bless you means that God wants good for you. And when we bless somebody, it means that we're intending for that person to receive good and the goodness of God into their life. So whether you're going on a trip or whether you're just simply desiring somebody to have the favor of God in their lives, you say, God bless you. And that led into uh, some other conversations. You know, I, I said the other the, the the fact of the matter is is that God is not in 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 heaven waiting for you to fail, waiting to 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 punish you with with whatever uh, uh, bat or baseball bat or stick that he that you th- imagine that he has. But he's like a good dad, not like your dad, better dad. A dad who's good all the time, and he wants good for you. And so, 1 John chapter 5 says the following words. This is the message we have heard from him. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light. Who is light? God is what? God is light. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. Can you imagine a place where there's no darkness at all? There's absolutely no shadow. Because nothing is covered from the light of God. That's what it is, and that's what it feels like to be in God's presence. Everything is light, and there is no darkness at all. And this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship, verse 6, with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. But if we walk in the light, so now if you walk, if I walk, if we walk in the light, the light in which, in whom there is no darkness, we have fellowship with one another, And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, did you ever think about the fact that that when God created the heavens and the earth, he created the sun and the stars and the moon. He created that after he created light. The Bible says that darkness was on the face of the deep. The Bible says that the Spirit of God was hovering above the waters that the earth was formless, it was void, it was empty, there was nothing in it. And then the Bible says, and God said, let there be light. And so, 
there appeared or there became manifest or there became evident a certain energy and a certain power called light. And then, in order to show and demonstrate in some imaginable, understandable way for humankind, God created the sun, the moon, the stars to show light. But we would fail, we would be wrong in saying that light comes from the sun, light comes from the moon, light comes from the stars. Because light itself comes from God himself. The Bible says God is light. That is a portion, that is a facet, that is a way in which God demonstrates himself. And the people of Israel, the the Jewish people, they are accustomed to this dichotomy. They're accustomed to these two different things, that there's light and there's darkness. Think about this, when the people of Israel, the ninth plague and the ten plagues that were visited upon Egypt, the ninth plague is the plague of darkness. I believe it's in Exodus chapter 10. And if we can read, actually, let's go ahead and read that. I want to show you how deep this darkness was. One of the plagues on the people of Egypt was that there would be darkness in Egypt. Let's turn to Exodus. Exodus chapter 10, verse 21. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. And it was a darkness which may even be felt. Stretch your hand over Egypt so that there may be darkness there. And it's such a big darkness that it may even be felt so that Moses stretched out his hand towards heaven and there was pitch darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days, but all the people of Israel had light where they lived. So the people of Israel know exactly the difference between light and darkness. And do you realize that in Egypt there was such darkness for three days that they didn't even move from their seats? So imagine we're an Egyptian church who doesn't know Jesus. We're in a temple or something. And all of a sudden there's there's entire, complete darkness. So for the first few minutes, it's like, okay, all right. I think, I think Pharaoh's probably going to probably repent this time. It'll be over in a few minutes. You know, uh, National Grid will get the lights back on. You know, nope. An hour passes by. They're getting tired, but they're too afraid to get up from their seat because it's too dark, and they don't know where anybody is. Long ago already, half an hour ago, children started crying. Everybody's wailing. People are thinking, I can't see my family that I was just there, that were just here. I can, I guess, feel them. I think these are my children. I think this is my husband, my wife. Everybody's scared for three days. Everybody's hungry. I mean, did we ever imagine what it means to be in complete and utter darkness? So this is the opposite of God. God is light, and in him there is no darkness. And Egypt is in darkness in whom there is no light. Absolutely dark, cannot see. People are crying, people are gnashing their teeth, people are wondering if there will ever be light again. People are 
going crazy. People are, are losing their mind because they are afraid for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. The children of Israel are eating. They're enjoying their families. They're playing. They're spending time in the word. They're spending time in the promises of, of God. They're, they're uh, reading their version app. They're doing whatever they need to do because life in the light is better than light in the darkness. There's no fear because God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Do you see the difference? The people of Israel knew the difference between light and darkness. The people of Israel knew the difference between light and darkness. We see also Moses coming down the mountain and his, light, his face had shone with light because the glory of God was shining on his face that he needed to cover it up. The people of Israel knew the difference between light and darkness. We heard today the man who was at the wedding feast and he did not have the proper wedding garments, the proper wedding attire on. His tuxedo was not on, but in reality, we know that it wasn't something that was on the inside, on the outside. It was something that was on the inside of him that he lacked and the king saw. And the Bible says that he was thrown into outer darkness. And so this was a familiar concept for the people listening to Jesus because they understood what it meant to be in the light versus in the darkness. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. The Bible tells us in Psalm 119 verse 105, your word is a light. Got it? God's word is like a light unto our path, a lamp unto our feet. And I've mentioned this before, but you know, when you're in a cave in, in pitch darkness and there's no light around you and you have a headlight, where does the light shine? You have a, head, a headlamp. Where, Shines wherever your head is. It shines wherever your head is. And so I want us to realize the fact that when we have the light of God, when we have the light of Christ in our lives, wherever we're going, that's where the light goes. Wherever we're going, that is where the light goes. The people of Israel... Do you think that when they stepped outside of their house, it was still dark? It was light. Because where the people of Israel were, there was light. And so, many of us have questions. Many of us are seeking direction from the Lord. Many of us are wondering why something happened in my life. Many of us are wondering, how will I get out of this or that situation? The Bible says that His Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Meaning wherever you are, there should be light. Are you walking in the light? Somebody is. Praise the Lord. The source of light is God. The source of the light is God himself. But we can also... We can also understand this concept that we need to understand our position in the light. We need to know the source of light that is God and in him there is no darkness at all, but we need to know our position in the light. And what struck me today, what struck me today is that, you know, while our pastor was preaching, it struck me the thought that, you know, 
this man who was at the wedding feast, this man who was at the wedding feast, he, he was at the wedding feast. He was there. He was present. But he shouldn't have been there. He wasn't prepared. It's kind of like, you know, when we say about ourselves, about Christians, we say that we are in the world but not of it. It's kind of like that. You know, he was in the wedding feast, but he wasn't part of the wedding feast. He was in the wedding feast. He was, he had, he had, he was there. He was present, but he wasn't fully, entirely invested bringing the proper garments. He wasn't paying attention entirely to the purpose, to the plan, to what was happening at the wedding feast. And so when the king looked at him, he saw immediately that on the inside, he wasn't of the wedding feast. And so there's that distinction. You know, this, this verse kind of alludes, these verses kind of alludes, uh, kind of allude to that point. How many of us have been walking near the light for a long time? How many of us are walking near the light for so long, but we haven't gotten into the light, haven't gotten completely washed by the light, where there's no darkness at all, and that's convicting to me, because we can be part of a church, we can be part of a community of believers, we can be on the roll call, we could be in the list of members and still carrying darkness inside of us. That's convicting to me. There's areas where I need the light of God to shine in my life. And some of us are like, well, I'm I'm in the light, but but not of the light. And God wants us to be in the light and of the light. You know why? Because the light of God is his glory and is his power. His manifest presence. So you you can imagine in creation, you know, no sun, no bright things in the sky, just complete darkness. And, you know, there's just like this presence in, you know, kind of like moving moving and flitting about the waters and, and, you know, or or whatever that mass of, of, of stuff was, that earth was form without form and void. And all of a sudden, through that darkness and through that nothingness and through that complete despair and, and, and uh, uh, depravity, God just, I, I, I can only imagine a deep, booming voice says, let there be light. And all of a sudden, there's, there's something we've never seen before. Great, glorious light energy that comes out of, no, not the sun, not from, uh, you know, LED lights, not from, you know, the high beams on your BMW. No, it's the light of the presence of God himself. And that is the glory of God. That is the essence of God himself. God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. And through the millennia and through the eons and through all time, darkness has tried to encroach on the light of God. But God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. And the Bible says that the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And his name is Jesus. And so... What we do here at Herald of Joy Church is we invite people to the light. We invite people to come to the light because in him there is no darkness at all. But John, I'm depressed. But John, I have issues. But John, I, I, I'm, 
I, I, can't, uh, I can't understand what next step to take in my life. The Bible says that God is light. His word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Are you walking in the light as he is in the light? And so, and so I want to turn to Revelation chapter 12. This is the message that we've heard. This is the message that we've heard. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. This is the passage of Scripture where the Bible describes that Satan is thrown down to earth in a, a bit of a final conquest. And Revelation chapter 12 says, uh, chapter 12, verse 10 says, And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, This this loud voice in heaven was giving them a message. Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before God. Now, I don't know a lot, but I know enough that the devil is, according to the Bible, walking around like a roaring lion, like praying, accusing his bre the brethren, meaning, and, and the sisters, accusing people of God, trying to misidentify, trying to lie, cheat, and swindle them out of having the kingdom of God. That's what the Bible says about the, the enemy, about the accuser of the brethren. But he has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. Verse 11, And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb. And by what? The word of their testimony. What's their word? This is the message that we have heard. That God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And they conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, for they loved not their lives, even unto death. I, I think, I think about, I think again about the, about how we heard the gospel portrayed this morning, Matthew chapter 21 and 22, where Jesus is, his authority is being questioned is put is being scrutinized is being put to question and they're saying how do you have the power how do you have the authority to do this and here it says and i heard a loud voice in heaven saying now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our god and the authority of his christ have come And so what did we learn this morning? That Jesus is inviting people to the wedding feast. The Father is inviting people to the wedding feast of his Son. And this is the gospel. I'll call it the gospel wedding feast. By what authority, Jesus, do you have to do these things and to say these things? Who do you think you are? I'm the Son of God, and I'm inviting you to the wedding feast. The gospel is the authority. And here, everything belongs to God to God. Everything belongs to Jesus. Salvation and power and the kingdom of our God. 
and the authority of his Christ. This is the gospel wedding feast. This is Jesus inviting you into his light, into a fellowship of brethren. Yes, there's accusers. Yes, there's people saying that you have no right to be in this wedding feast, but we have received the garments of righteousness. And we belong here because we've been washed with his blood. I want us to realize this again. The gospel, wedding feast, Jesus has the authority to call us there. Jesus has the authority to call us together to the gospel wedding feast. It's his power. It's his authority. The kingdom of God is in our midst. And what does this mean? Here's the application. In case you're waiting. 1 John chapter 1. Verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Verse 11, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, and they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb. Do you see why fellowship is so important? Do you see why fellowship is so important to us as Christians? Because if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, if we're walking together in fellowship, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. So let's have a lot of fellowship. Let's, let's you know, open up the, this back area here, put out tables every, after every service. Let, let's have fellowship. But what actually is the other portion of this? It's to walk in the light. If you're walking in the light with people having fellowship, the blood of Jesus cleanses you from sin. What is the power of our victory? What is the power of our victory together? How do we have victory together? The blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Our testimony, being together, testifying, speaking into each other's lives, the message that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Speaking together, the gospel Wedding feast invitation. Come to the feast. Come to the light. Come to the power of God. Come to the authority of God. Come to the kingdom of God. Because God is waiting on you. And that's where Jesus got his authority. And so, these couple of devotional thoughts I wanted to share with you. You know... I just want to encourage everyone here. You know, the thing is, is that when you're saved, when you're saved, the light of Jesus comes into your life. Give me two more minutes. The light, the light of Jesus comes into your life. And here's the really good thing about that. When you're saved and the light of Jesus is in your life, you can feel darkness right away. And some of you, some of me sometimes, has darkness. We have issues. We draw far away from God. We don't spend time in the Word. We don't spend time in prayer. We don't spend time in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We don't do that. And darkness begins to creep into our lives. In the place where there should be light, darkness begins to creep. And so I'm asking you, run to the light. 
I'm asking you, I'm begging you on the basis of the scripture. This is what Jesus would say to you today. Was he, would he physically be here? And this is what he's asking you right now. Come to the light. If you have darkness, find somebody who has the light. If you have issues, come to the light. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Come to the light. Why? You know why? Because when you're in the light, you don't care there, there was darkness. You're just happy that there's light now. It doesn't matter. The shame doesn't matter. The fear doesn't matter. The anxiety doesn't matter. Your, your palpitations don't matter anymore. Your, your physical manifestations of who you were once because of your issues don't matter. Jesus is the light in your life. And so I'm begging you, in Jesus' name, I'm begging you to come to the light. You can do this. People are here for you. People need you to be part of our fellowship. People need you to, to be a, manif a manifestation of the light and the love and the life of God. That's what Jesus wants. That's Jesus' desire. And so Eric's going to preach in a few moments. Listen to that word. Listen to the word. Allow it to bathe whatever darkness you might have, whatever fear you might have, whatever issue you might have. Apply it to that. Find somebody who can help you, whether that's Dima, whether that's Eric, whether that's the pastor, whether it's one of the brothers, whether it's your closest friend, whether it's your parent, your mom, your dad, whoever. Come to the light because that's what Jesus wants. That's his desire because that's where he is. Amen.